What is going on everybody? It's the Naughty Investor here. Today I wanted to go over the differences between ERC-20 and ERC-223 token standards. But before I get into that, I am going to say this. If you're a beginner, this video will be helpful. If you're more advanced, this video will be helpful because I'm going to explain basically what a token even is. Because there are people out there who hear about these tokens and these ICOs. They don't know what it even means. I'm going to go over that briefly and then I'll get into the differences. So ERC-20 versus ERC-223. I put it in slideshow format. If you guys enjoyed that, comment below because I didn't really know how else to really format this. I, you know, usually um, going over charting data or reading news stories and articles and stuff. But So this is how I formatted it. Let's get into it. So I'm going to go to the next slide now. As you guys can see, that's just my title. I kept it very plain Jane. I don't, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, let's go to the next slide now. ERC-20 explained. ERC-20 is a standard that tokens on the Ethereum network can meet and tokens that check all the necessary boxes are deemed ERC-20 tokens. These tokens are blockchain assets that have value and can be sent and received just like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, you know, any other cryptocurrency. The difference between these tokens and a standalone currency like, you know, Litecoin is that ERC-20 tokens use the Ethereum network. They piggyback on the Ethereum network. So it's basically a cryptocurrency that is built on the Ethereum network, but it's not Ethereum, of course. And it's hosted by Ethereum addresses, wallet addresses, and it is sent using Ethereum transactions. Basically, ERC means Ethereum request for comments. That's the gist of it. So it's basically a, a, a what separates a token from a coin. And there is debate over this, over, you know, what should we, should we really say there's a difference? And I think we should. The difference between a token and a normal cryptocurrency is a token uses a different network. A token uses a network of a cryptocurrency, whereas a cryptocurrency is is the main thing on the network. So Bitcoins is a, is a coin, is a crypto coin, cryptocurrency versus, let's say, um, INXT, which is a video on an ICO I did a while ago. INXT is an ERC-20 compatible token, and it's built on the Ethereum network. So or, you know, Oyster, another ICO video I did. Also, it is ERC-20 built on the Ethereum network. So it's a token, it's a crypto, but it's on the Ethereum network. Now, Ethereum is not the only... In my, in my opinion right now, the Ethereum is the biggest network as far as, you know, ICOs go. I feel it's the most used. You know, I'm in this industry all day long. You know, I see what most ICOs are using. And most of the time, it's Ethereum. But don't get me wrong, there are others, there are competitors, there's Waves, which I find interesting, there's um, Neo, there's a couple different, you know, I would refer to them as side chains, you know, cryptocurrencies that have networks that other, you know, ICLs could use. So there are other ones out there, you just have to look for them, you know, Waves is one of them, you know, of course there's Ethereum, but yeah, and there's um, Neo as well. So Neo's kind of like the Chinese Ethereum, I guess you would call it. But what have you, that is what ERC-20 means. Now let's get over the differences the moment you've been waiting for. ERC-223, this eliminates the problem of lost tokens, which happen during the transfer of ERC-20 tokens to a contract when people mistakenly use the instructions for sending tokens to a wallet. ERC-223 allows users to send their tokens to either wallet or contract with the same function transfer, thereby eliminating the potential for confusing, confusing? confusion and lost tokens. Two, it allows developers to handle incoming token transactions and reject non-supported tokens. Not supported, and that's not possible with ERC-20. And the final and probably biggest improvement is energy savings. The transfer of ERC-223 tokens to a contract is a one-step process rather than a two-step process, like for ERC-20, it's a two-step process. This means it uses two times less gas and no extra blockchain bloating. So this will help stop the congestion of the Ethereum network, and it's also going to be a lot cheaper. It is an overall improvement, and I see more ICOs are going to be going to this. One thing I wanted to add that I didn't put into this is ERC, it is backwards compatible. ERC-223 is backwards compatible, so you don't have to worry about that. But what do you guys think of this presentation? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What are your thoughts on it? 
Um, did you find it informative? If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and share this video. Share on Reddit, share on Twitter, share it wherever you want. And I'll catch you guys later. I probably will upload again today. And hope you guys have a wonderful day and you'll make some money in those crypto markets. Peace out.